Howdy, ornamental birds, folks. This video comes straight from the questions you left in the last video. Thanks for the interaction. Today we're going to answer a question many of you have in mind. Can we cross our hybrid chickens, like Isa Browns or maybe a Loman Brown or even a broiler line such as a Cobb 500, with our heritage or backyard chickens? Have you ever marveled at the incredible productivity of chickens like the Isa Brown, capable of laying over 320 eggs a year, and wondered where that amazing genetic potential comes from? Or perhaps you've imagined having broiler chickens that grow fast, but with the hardiness of your traditional backyard birds. Maybe what you're looking for is to have birds that better withstand the heat or diseases in your area, but still lay a good number of eggs. Or conversely, if your goal is maximum efficiency in production, you might be wondering if these crosses will help you or, on the contrary, hurt you. The answer to all these questions, and that main doubt, depends directly on your objective. If your primary goal isn't large-scale commercial production but rather having more robust birds, adapted to your backyard, that lay more eggs than your pure heritage hens, then yes, crossing a commercial line with a heritage chicken could be an option, but with very realistic expectations. To understand this better, let's first talk about our heritage or backyard chickens. These birds are the true champions of adaptation in our local environments. Their genetic diversity is amazing. That's why no two heritage chickens are exactly alike in appearance or behavior. Think of it like a toolbox full of diverse tools, each useful for a different situation. Their greatest strength lies in their adaptability and hardiness. They are perfectly acclimated to your environment's conditions, from extreme weather and available feed types to general management on a family farm. They are remarkably resistant to many common diseases that could decimate a hybrid flock, and they don't require sophisticated diets or facilities. You can see them foraging naturally, finding their own food. In addition, a large percentage retain their broodiness instinct, making them excellent mothers, capable of incubating their own eggs and raising their chicks. This is invaluable if you're looking for self-sufficiency and the satisfaction of watching your flock grow without relying on incubators or constantly buying chicks. This maternal instinct is something that high-production hybrids have almost completely lost. However, in terms of production, they tend to be more modest, laying perhaps between 80 and 150 eggs a year, and their growth is slower if we're talking about meat. They simply aren't designed for the extremely high productivity of an industrial farm, but rather for survival and self-sufficiency in a backyard setting, where quantity is less important than resistance and the ability to fend for themselves. When considering a cross, especially if you're looking for an improved backyard, the choice of the heritage chicken is key to optimizing results. It's not just any heritage bird. If your primary interest is increasing egg production, for example using an Isa brown hen as the mother and a heritage rooster, which is most common, look within your heritage birds for those that prove to be the best layers. Pay close attention to those that lay good-sized eggs, neither too small nor excessively large, and with good frequency, even if it's less than a hybrid. Think of that hen in your backyard that always has the fullest nest. Ideally, the heritage hen's body size and weight should be medium, say between 3.3 pounds and 4.4 pounds. This is important because a heritage hen with a good base size can help the F1 offspring have a robust body structure that supports higher production, without being too large or consuming too much. If your goal is meat production, crossing with a Cobb 500 or similar broiler strain rooster, then both the rooster and the heritage hen you choose should be the largest and most robust growing individuals in your group. Observe those with a more muscular body conformation, especially in the breast and thighs. A weight in heritage hens of 4.4 pounds or more, and in heritage roosters of 6.6 .6 pounds or more, would be an excellent starting point to maximize the resulting characteristics in the offspring. You're looking for the athletes of your heritage flock. Results of the cross, the first generation, F1. When you perform this cross, the first generation, the F1 of the cross, will inherit a combination of attributes from both parents, seeking a balance and often exhibiting a degree of hybrid vigor. For example, in a cross of an Isa Brown, female, with a heritage rooster selected for laying, you can expect the resulting F1 hens to lay between 180 and 220 eggs per year. This is significantly more than a pure heritage hen, sometimes double. But, and this is crucial, it will never reach the 320 eggs of a pure Isa Brown. The eggs will be medium to large in size, with greater uniformity in shape and color than those of a pure heritage hen. Physically, these F1 hens will be intermediate in size, weighing around 4.4 to 5.5 pounds, and having a more robust structure than a pure Isa Brown, which gives them greater hardiness. 
Their robustness and adaptability will be better than a hybrid chicken. They will be more resistant to diseases and adverse weather conditions than pure Isa Browns, thanks to the heritage genetics they've inherited. They'll better tolerate temperature fluctuations and less intensive management. And yes, there's a high probability they'll retain the tendency to be broody, which is excellent if you want your hens to raise their own chicks. Imagine having productive layers who are also excellent mothers. There will be variability in their plumage and color, giving each a unique look, but the uniformity in egg size will be better than that of a pure heritage hen. On the other hand, if you cross a broiler strain rooster, Cobb 500 or similar, with a heritage hen selected for meat, the F1 chicks will grow faster than a pure heritage chicken, potentially reaching between 3.3 and 4.4 pounds in 8 to 10 weeks. While this is slower than a pure Cobb 500, which achieves it in 6 to 7 weeks, it's a significant improvement over a heritage chicken, which might take twice as long for the same weight. They will have better meat conformation than a pure heritage chicken, with a more developed breast and meatier thighs, though without the massive and almost unnatural musculature of the pure Cobb. Most importantly, they will be much hardier and more adaptable to backyard management than commercial broiler chickens, drastically reducing mortality and the need for medication. The advantages for your backyard are clear. Greater self-sufficiency by being able to raise your own replacements, hardier birds that require fewer specialized inputs, and improved production compared to a pure heritage chicken. However, unpredictability remains a factor, and this type of cross is not suitable for commercial purposes due to a lack of uniformity and efficiency for the mass market. Now, if your goal is maximum egg or meat production for commercial purposes, the answer is a resounding no. It's not advisable to cross F1 hybrids with heritage chickens. To understand why, let's briefly recall F1 hybrids like Isa Browns or Cobb 500s. As we saw in great detail in a previous video, these birds are designed. They are the first generation, F1, of a very specific cross between carefully selected pure lines. Their superproduction is due to the phenomenon of heterosis or hybrid vigor. Imagine this as a perfect genetic formula. The combination of genes from their purebred parents creates a peak performance that exceeds the average of both parents. It's a synergy where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Think of a soccer team where each player is an absolute specialist, and together, they form an invincible team. They are specialists in their field. Isa Browns are egg factories, optimized to lay a large brown egg almost daily. Cobb 500s are fast-growing machines with unparalleled feed efficiency. But this specialization comes at a cost. They are less hardy, depend on very specific management, with precise diets and environmental control, and have a shorter productive longevity. Their productive lifespan is short and explosive. The main reason not to cross them with heritage chickens if you're seeking commercial efficiency is the loss of heterosis. When a producer, out of ignorance or an attempt to save costs, decides to breed two chickens that are already first-generation hybrids with each other, a cross between an F1 and another F1, they are creating what is known as a second filial generation, F2. This happens because a heritage or backyard chicken is considered a mixed breed or very similar to a hybrid without defined genetics. This is where the perfect recipe of the F1 begins to unravel. The F1, being highly heterozygous with many unique combinations of alleles, does not transmit its genetic combination in an orderly fashion to the F2. It's like trying to photocopy a photocopy of an original work of art. Each copy loses more quality, more detail, more fidelity to the original. The high heterozygosity, which gives the F1 its vigor, dissolves in the F2 due to segregation and genetic recombination during gamete formation. The alleles that were perfectly combined in the F1 separate and regroup in new ways in the F2 completely randomly. The result is a drastic drop in the number of eggs. F2 hens will lay far fewer eggs than their F1 mothers, and often, these eggs will be smaller, have poorer shell quality, or their laying will be much more irregular and less persistent over time. Goodbye profitability. For broiler chickens, the result is very slow growth and, what's worse, higher feed consumption per pound of meat produced. Imagine this in your costs. If you have to invest twice as much in feed to get the same pound of meat, or if your hens lay half the expected eggs in a business, that means massive losses and, eventually, having to close your doors. Furthermore, you'll lose uniformity, which is vital for a business. You need your birds to grow or produce similarly for efficient management and to sell a homogenous product. Crosses of F1 with F1 will result in a batch of completely different birds, some large, some small, some that lay a lot, others little. This greatly complicates management and marketing. 
If you want to maintain maximum production and profitability, the only viable strategy is to acquire new F1 birds directly from specialized genetic companies in each production cycle, always ensuring you have birds with maximum genetic potential. These companies, with their multi-million dollar investment in research and development of their pure genetic lines, are the only ones who have the complete recipe and ingredients to produce those F1 hens with their exceptional potential. This is their essential role in the global poultry production chain. If, despite all that's been said, you decide to go for a cross for your backyard, there are some crucial points to keep in mind to maximize your results and avoid unpleasant surprises. These are the details that make the difference. First, the choice of the male matters. A lot. For backyard crossing, if you're looking for hardiness and for the F1 females to be good layers, you can use a heritage male for your hybrid laying hens or vice versa. The fundamental thing is to understand that the result will be a mix, not necessarily a net improvement in absolute productivity. If your goal is meat, using an F1 broiler strain rooster with heritage hens, it's crucial that this rooster is of good commercial genetics so that it can transmit some of the growth speed, even if it's not a purebred breeder. Next, let's talk about the feeding and nutrition of these crossed birds. Although the resulting F1s are hardier, when aiming for that extra production of eggs or meat, their nutritional requirements will be significantly higher than those of a pure heritage chicken. Don't expect that increase in production if they only rely on what they find foraging in the backyard. They will need a diet with a higher protein and energy balance than grass and insects. You might consider a supplementary balanced feed specifically for layers or for broilers. While their needs are less strict than those of a pure factory hybrid, good feeding is key for them to reach their potential and, most importantly, not compromise their health and well-being due to nutritional deficiencies. Remember, what you invest in good nutrition will be directly reflected in your production and the health of your birds. Regarding management and health, despite their hardiness, these birds aren't invincible. They'll need adequate space and housing that protects them from extreme weather and predators, as well as a clean, well-ventilated environment to prevent diseases. It's crucial to establish a basic health program, including regular deworming to control internal and external parasites, and if necessary, due to common diseases in your area, some preventative vaccinations. The higher production we aim for can create some stress in the birds, making them more susceptible if management is deficient. Individual observation is also vital, as variability in crosses means each bird can behave or respond differently. Some will be more productive, others more broody, and some might need a bit more attention or a specific feeding regimen. Being a good observer is key to backyard success. Finally, consider the economic aspect of your choice. While we're not talking about a large-scale commercial model, there are financial implications to consider for your household economy. The initial investment of a cross can be less than continuously buying F1 hybrid birds. The possibility of self-replacement thanks to the broodiness of these F1s can generate significant long-term savings for the small producer or hobbyist as you free yourself from the constant need to buy day-old chicks. Furthermore, although production may not be massive, the eggs or meat from these backyard birds can have added value if marketed locally in your community to neighbors or friends as farm products, more natural, or with less chemical use, which could compensate for the lower quantity of production and appeal to a niche market willing to pay a bit more for that quality. It's vital to maintain realistic expectations. Don't expect to get the best of both worlds in terms of maximum productivity. It's a combination of attributes where you gain hardiness in some production, but sacrifice high commercial efficiency and perfect uniformity. And a very, very important point. If you continue to cross the resulting chickens from your first cross, the F1s, among themselves, what you'll get is greater genetic dilution, more variability, and generally a progressive decrease in productivity in subsequent generations, F2, F3, etc. With each generation, your birds will resemble a pure heritage chicken more and lose that boost in production from the hybrid. This effect is irreversible and fundamental to understand to avoid long-term frustrations. I hope this detailed explanation has been super useful for you to make the best decision for your coops. What do you think? Have you tried these crosses in your chicken coops already? Leave your comments below with your experiences, your successes, or even your failures. I'd love to read them and keep talking about this fascinating topic. If you like this video and found it useful, please give us a like so YouTube shows it to more breeders like you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to avoid missing any of our upcoming videos. Your support helps us continue sharing valuable knowledge for our community. Also, 
Share this video on your social media so more breeders learn from this important information. To your success, fellow breeder, until next time.